All right, so the first thing that you want to do when you're downloading the Libby app is to look for the App Store on your device. On an Apple device, you're looking at the Apple App Store, or on an Android device, you'd be looking for the Google Play Store. All right, so I'm going to go to my App Store, and it's going to take me to the home page, but we're going to look for the search option. Um, on any device's App Store, there should be a way to search. Usually it's at the top of the screen, or it may be at the bottom of the screen. For Apple's, uh, it is on the bottom right-hand corner, um, and most search options are um, given the magnifying glass icon. All right, so once you find your search option, you're going to look for Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. And you can see right here, I have the uh, Libby by Overdrive. Um, mine has a little cloud with a download option um, icon, which it means I've had the app on my device before. Um, if you're looking for something else, um, it's probably going to say something like Git, like right here next to this Epic um, app. So you may see Git or you may see um, a cloud. It just kind of depends. So I'm going to go ahead and click that so it downloads Libby onto my device. And there we go. We're ready. So once it's downloaded, it will say open. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. All right. So we can see here that we are now in our Libby app. All right, once we get to our Libby app, um, it's going to ask you first if you have a library card, and we're going to say yes. All right, so the next thing you want to do is search for a library. So I'm going to go ahead and click search for a library. And what we want to put in is Campbell County And so you can see here that you get a couple options if you put in Campbell County. The first one is not the one that you are looking for. The first one you can see is in Wyoming. What we're looking for is Kentucky Libraries Unbound. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And so now that I have chosen Campbell County Public Library, it's going to ask me if I have a library card. Um, and you can use your phone number if you want to. If not, um, you can go back and tell it to skip this step. All right, so now that we are in the Kentucky Libraries Unbound, you can see that at the top of the screen, we're going to click the little Libby icon in the top right-hand corner. All right, so... All right, so underneath your libraries, we're going to look for add a library card, and we're going to go ahead and add our library card. So we'll go ahead and click add library card, and then you can see in green where it says Camel County Public Library, we're just going to go ahead and click on that. And then you're going to input your library card number. So I'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and put in my library card number. All right, and so once you've put in your library card number and you click the green sign in button, what you're going to do is see your card appear. And so you can see right now my card, um, you may title it whatever you want. I've titled mine Morgan CCPL in case I have other library cards from other libraries, then I can differentiate which library I'm um, looking at. Uh, you can see that I have loans 2 of 20, holds 2 of 20, so um, that go ahead and tells you that you have two items um, checked out. I have two items on hold, and it tells me that I can have 20 of each. Um, you can hit the next button, and it's going to take you back to the home page. But if you go back to that Libby icon in the top right corner, um, you can see that you can also continue to add another library card underneath you your libraries. So if you had another card, perhaps from Kenton County or Cincinnati Public or Lexington Public Library, then you can add those cards. You can also add other CCPL cards, um, such as if you are the parent and you want to add a child's card on your account so that you can switch between those. And it's super easy to switch between them. Um, under C, a library card, there would be more cards listed here that I could switch between. I would just click on the card that I am interested in. All right, so now that we are in Kentucky Libraries Unbound with our library card logged in, um, we are going to begin to searching for things that we want to check out. Um, so on the home page, you can see different um, books that are in categories that change every 
month. Um, so things like She Sleuths, which are women detectives, probably for Women's History Month. Um, you can see um, things that have just been added. Um, and then you can see down here at the bottom more subjects that you can explore if you're looking for a certain genre. But at the top of the screen, we are looking for that magnifying glass icon again that tells us that we can search. So we can go ahead and click in here and we can search. So we can go ahead and click in here and we will search for something. All right, so I really like history books, so I am going to type in history. And so you can see we get a lot of results. It tells us right here at the top, everything matching history, it's listing 7,007 books. It also suggests a collection. Um, and the collection are those subject collections I showed you at the bottom of the first page, and that is the history genre. So you go ahead and click that if you're interested in that, or we're going to work with some of the preferences and other um, subject categories up here at the top of our screen to refine our search. So the first thing I know I want to do um, in this after the listing is I can see that I want to um, make sure my search includes nonfiction. So if I go ahead and click on the, that, that nonfiction, it's going to add that to my search, which brings us down to about 5,000 items. Um, I want to keep eliminating things, so I want to keep making this more specific. So I'm going to go ahead and click biography and autobiography. Um, which will bring us down to, it looks like 1,500 items. That's a little bit more manageable. The next thing I'm going to do is click on preferences. So right here where you see this little plus sign and it says preferences, I can see that I can change the format, my language, my audience, my availability. So the first thing I want to do is availability. I want things that um, are available now perhaps. So that's things that you can automatically now check out. Or underneath audience, you could say, oh, I'm looking for something for a juvenile or something for a teen. So you could change it to juvenile or young adult. Um, you also see we have a lot of language options. Um, so you could um, define which language you're looking for. Maybe you're looking for something in Spanish. And then format. So um, this tells us that we are looking for a book, an audiobook, or a magazine. And I think Right now, I'm looking for books. All right, and then once you've um, defined all of that, you can go ahead and apply your preferences by clicking this Apply Preferences button. All right, so there is the Refine button over here on the right side of the screen that's going to give us some more options to apply your preferences and change some of those preferences we saw underneath the Preferences tab. But uh, the one that I want to talk about is the Sort By feature. So this is going to help you sort the books so that you are um, finding what you need within your search. So relevance, everything that's the most relevant to your search um, words, uh, popularity, release date, title, author. Um, there's also popularity by your library. So things that are popular within um, Campbell County Public Library or Kentucky Libraries Unbound users. Um, but these sorting features just kind of help you see what you want to see first on your list. All right, so right now we're just going to do relevance. And we can see right away I have some options that I can borrow. And so um, when you're looking for something, uh, they'll say borrow or place hold. And underneath um, here, you can see on History Buff's Guide to the Presidents um, that it says borrow. So that tells me I can go ahead and check this out. If I was looking at something like this Mary Queen of Scots in history, you can see instead it says place hold, which means I'm going to place a hold on the item and it will become avail available to me at a later date and I will be able to check it out then. Um, so let's go ahead and look at that one. So on place hold, you can see um, some more information. So right now it tells us our wait time is about two weeks. And if I click this little calendar icon next to place hold, I can see that there is only one copy in our library and that no one else is waiting. So I would be number one on the holds list if I were to go ahead and place a hold. So we'll go ahead and place a hold. And so now it's gonna give me the same information when I click place a hold. Uh, you can see that I can still have 18 more holds. I will be uh, number one in, in place to get this book next. So there you go. All right. 
So we're going to go back to our search by going back up to the top of the screen and clicking this back arrow. And we're going to see something that we can actually borrow. So let's go ahead and do the history buffs guide to the presidents. Uh, so here we can see, we can go ahead and click borrow. Um, and so that is going to let us check it out. But the first thing you need to do before you click this green borrow button is to say um, check the amount of days that you are checking it out. So that's at the top. It says you are borrowing the history bus guide to the presidents for 21 days. I can click on that 21 and change it to 7 or 14 if I know I'm going to read it really quickly and I don't want to take up as much room on my holds, um, on my loan shelf then I might change 21 days to seven days. Um, maybe I don't care about reading it very quickly and I just know I have other things I might wanna be checking out soon. Um, it also helps you return items quickly so that other people on the holds list can go ahead and get it. All right, so we, once we decide how long we want that checked out for, we can see it says here on my card, I can still have 18 more loans. So we're gonna hit borrow. And so when you hit borrow on the Libby app, it'll ask you if you wanna go ahead and open the book or keep browsing or to go to your shelf. Uh, so we're gonna go back to the search really quickly and we are gonna click this arrow again. And so we can see here, um, we could go ahead and search. We could um, define more things that we want so that we can eliminate more options. But the thing that we're looking for next is going to be looking at our loans and our holds that we currently have. All right, so once we're ready to go and see what we actually have, um, you can see at the bottom of the screen that um, it says library in the left hand corner. And that's where you can go to find things to check out or place holds on. So that's how you get back to Kentucky Libraries Unbound through the Libby app. If you wanna look at what you actually have out or have holds on, you're gonna go over to the right hand side that says shelf. So on our shelf, we can see our loans, our holds, or our tags. Um, and tags are more advanced and we'll get into that maybe in a later video, but right now we're just gonna focus on our loans and holds. You can also scroll down and it'll tell you your recent loans, what's on your loan sh and what's on your loan shelf. So it defaults to going to your loan shelf. So um, we can see here that we can take some actions on our recent loans. We can synchronize our shelf. Uh, maybe you've not been connected to the internet and you might need to update your shelf and you've downloaded or added things from um, other devices. Um, you can change your download rules. You can suspend all your holds. There's a lot of actions that you can do with recent items. Um, but on our loans shelf, we can see um, the different things that we have out. So if we click this loans at the top, um, it's going to show everything that we have. So all three of these items. Um, you can see that two of them have check marks on them, which means they're actually downloaded onto the current device I am working with. The other one, um, the Duchess deal, uh, is not downloaded onto this device, but if I wanted to, I would click that little cloud arrow button and it would download it onto this device. Um, you also have options to read with or open in Libby. Um, so uh, if I click read with, this, this is because this one is not downloaded yet. I could go ahead and choose because I have the Kindle app on my phone, I could read this on my Kindle app. Now remember that Libby doesn't actually work on Kindle devices, but if you have an iPhone or an Android device that has the Kindle app, you can read books in the Kindle app from Libby. Or you can choose to read this within the Libby app. And I like just reading it in the Libby app. Libby doesn't store stuff on your device necessarily and doesn't take up as much room um, as it would reading in the Kindle app or maybe the Apple Books app. So I would just go ahead and click Libby and so it's gonna download it into Libby and open up the book for me. And I will be ready to read. I would just, you know, um, move the pages back and forth, um, things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the back button up here in the top left corner. And we can look at some more options that we have on books that we actually have checked out. Um, another thing we can do is manage our loan. And so managing our loan, we could go back to that read with option and maybe switch it over to Kindle or I could return it early. Um, so if I was done with this, I could go ahead and return it. 
another option that you'll get about two days before your book is due is to renew your loan. So if there are no holds on that book, you can go ahead and renew your book um, for another whatever amount of days that you want to renew it for um, going forward. So maybe you didn't finish it and you want another seven days, you could go ahead and renew for seven more days. All right, and so that are some of your options and actions that you can do on your loan shelf. So we're gonna go back and click up here where it says shelf in the top left-hand corner, and we're gonna go and click holds instead. So we're gonna look at our holds. So you can see I have a couple holds going on, and the first two say approximately two weeks. The last one says over six months because that book is actually not released yet, um, but the other two are. Um, so some of our options we have here is we can click this two weeks and it'll once again tell me that there are three people waiting. I'm number one in line and there is one copy in use and we only have one copy. Um, another option I could do is manage my hold. So I could choose some different options. Um, one is deliver later, which we can talk about in a more advanced video, but there are options to say, hey, I don't want this I want to freeze my place in line and I want to um, pick it back up later. And then I can also cancel my hold. So I could go ahead and cancel my hold. Maybe I got this as a physical copy from the library and I no longer need it on Libby or Kentucky Libraries Unbound. Um, and you can do that for any of the books that are on your holds shelf. Um, you can also see here that this one at the very bottom is an audiobook. So the difference between audiobooks and ebooks is that ebooks are just going to have a basic cover, but audiobooks will have these little earbud options and say audio on them. All right, so that is how you view your loans and holds on Libby. And so the next thing we're going to talk about are some of the basic settings that you can change in Libby um, to kind of make it more towards your own preference. So a major difference between Libby and um, using Kentucky Libraries Unbound perhaps on your computer through their website is that the settings are kind of built into Libby as you're doing things and not so much a specific page um, on its own that you can visit. If you want to get into more detail, I would say visiting Kentucky Libraries Unbound online through their website is where you can access the most settings. And on Libby, it's going to just kind of be kind of hit or miss um, some, some things you can do and some things you can't do through the app. So for example, um, changing like default loan periods, you're going to do that online on their website. But um, on Libby, you do that when you're checking the book out and like I showed you, changing it from 21 to 7 to 14 days. Um, you can also do a little bit of that with these, this manage loan um, section. Um, but one of the options you have is underneath this actions button right here is, like I said, um, synchronizing your shelf. Um, you can change clearing your reading now. So it's telling me right now, right now I'm reading The Duchess Deal. I could clear that and open up a different book um, to change that. Um, I can change my read books with from here, but I can also change my download rules. And so that's one of the uh, uh, settings that you can change within Libby, which are the download rules. So I have it set to automatically download everything I borrow. But if you want to manage how much space it's taking up, you can say only titles under 20 megabytes can be downloaded or nothing. Um, everything will be streamed and will be unavailable offline unless you choose to download it um, manually. So when you do choose nothing, it means that you have to have um, internet connection for you to use it. Um, but I can also say that I only want to download on, on Wi-Fi, um, so it won't be using any of my mobile data. If you want to be able to download it, even when you're not connected to Wi-Fi, you would just turn that option off. So we'll go ahead and click the hide button and see what else we can do. You can also, like I said, suspend all your holds. When you suspend your holds, that means you're kind of pressing pause on your holds and you can choose a selection of dates that you want to suspend those but we'll do that in a more advanced video later all right so some of the other actions you can do once again if you go to your hold shelf and click actions you can synchronize this and you can suspend all your holds um, you can see up here 
underneath um, Libby, the Libby icon, we have a couple of options here, such as managing your notifications. Right now I have those disabled, but if I wanted to receive um, notifications, I could click enable um, notifications and it would open it up in my settings app for me to change that. So some of the settings that you need to change for Libby are gonna actually be in the your device's settings app. Um, another thing that you can do is click receive email notifications so you can get email notifications from Libby um, or you can choose to not send notifications at all. Another thing you can do is look at um, new notifications that they're going to give you right here. So usually sometimes I'll have four or five of these and it'll tell me, oh, your hold is ready or um, an item has been returned. And right now they're telling me about the deliver later feature that we might talk about in a later video. But um, so you can always find new information about um, things going on with Libby right here at the top of your screen. Once again, you have your adding an, an additional library card underneath help and support. You can click on read books with and change um, your preferences. So sometimes maybe you can say I have no preference or you can go ahead and say I always want to read it in the Libby app or I always want to read it with my Kindle app. Um, so you can always change those preferences here as well. All right, so that's kind of all that is available but um, you can see um, different actions that you wanna do sometimes are defined by the shelf that they're on. So you can see it kind of changes what I can do right here because I'm on my loan shelf. It changes what I can do because I'm on my hold shelf. And then when I'm on just the front page, it also has different actions that you can do. So there you go. That's a little bit about Libby's basic settings that you can change within the app. Other things you might have to change within the settings app on your device. This was the Libby app um, that you can use with your library card to check out um, ebooks, audiobooks, and more. Um, remember to use your Campbell County Public Library card um, with this app so that you can make sure you're seeing everything that's available to you as a Campbell County Library card holder through Kentucky Libraries Unbound. We do purchase additional materials on top of what Kentucky Libraries Unbound purchases. And so um, when you are looking at it with your Campbell County card, you might see a little bit more than you would just be seeing um, just in Kentucky Libraries Unbound. So um, it also makes it easier to check things out and place holds right away. Um, um, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out or visit someone at the Information Services Desk. We're always happy to help you with your Libby app or your um, Kentucky Library on Unbound accounts. Um, and I hope you all have a great day.